Harold Geller, Managing Director of Ad ID, which is a joint venture of the 4As and the ANA. And what, what Ad ID really is, is it's the industry standard for ad identifying advertising assets, digital assets, across all, all media. And what we announced today was that 12 trade associations and endorsed Ad ID, and it's the first time, it's a historic time that we're both, we have engineering organizations, production organizations, and trade associations endorsing a single asset coding system. There are three categories that have never really come together before to endorse anything. You know, we have engineering organization called the Advanced Media Workflow Association. We've got production associations called the Association of Independent Commercial Producers and the Independent Association of Independent Content Editors, Creative Editors. And then we've got the IAB, which is the Interactive Advertising Bureau in the vertical associations the television bureau, the cable television advertising bureau, the syndicators. What we really got here is all of these three groups of organizations coming together and saying what's important to us is now the same thing. We need to be able to do things faster, do things cheaper, and we need to be able to do them across platforms. And they're now realizing that if we work together on these kinds of things, there are cost savings everywhere and there are common benefits. And so the announcement this morning really talked about that and the fact that Nielsen has turned around and said, we have these three very distinct buckets of commercial ratings, competitive analysis, and commercial verification, all of which can use common identification. You know, again, ever think about the last time you walked through a supermarket and didn't see a UPC code? Uh, I, you know, my, my favorite analogy is you know, if you remember walking around in the supermarket, the, the kid with the price gun. You know, they used to just walk around and say arbitrarily, that's the price that's on this object. And it was very easy for somebody who you know, wanted to save a few cents to strip the price off that and put it on something else. Well, that's the same thing we have today where if you don't have a standard way of identifying an asset and describing it, then how can you do anything? And as our, our ecosystem becomes more complex and we start stop talking about broadcast and we're talking about narrow cast and you know, targeted messaging, targeted interactivity, we need common identification and description. And that's what this announcement was about this morning. Every content object, and in this case a content object would probably typically be an ad, mm -hmm. a video ad, uh, has a unique identifier. Right, and that's the goal. You know, getting every advertiser on board to have every ad, whether it's a video ad, whether it's a display ad, whether it's an audio ad, all of them can be uniquely described and uniquely identified. And that would be the role of Ad ID. So we've already got 700 advertisers doing it. That's out of a market of 2,800, between 2,800 and 300,000 if you talk about people who spend $100 on local broadcast ads. So we've, you know, we've made it come a long way in the last four years where we've gone from 100 advertisers to over 700. Now we need to take that next leap. Let's start with the, the problem. And it isn't necessarily a problem for just the advertiser or the agency, because they probably have the least amount of pain. However, they're the beneficiaries of a lot of things. You know, if you want to, you know, they want to know what kind of, you know, what kind of a rating this this asset got, or they want to know how it compares to what they sh what, it, what they expected. So this is a supply chain problem. You know, if I look at it just from the advertiser or the agency's perspective, in all of the computer systems that deal with the ad, the information about that ad is rekeyed somewhere around 30 times. Huge waste of time and effort. Rekeying in and of itself isn't enough to turn a lot of advertisers around. You know, it's sort of like, we, we're still, we, we've been, lived in a world of the buyer and seller. You know, and in a buyer and seller relationship, it's sort of like, why should I do something that's going to make the seller more productive? Is he going to reduce my costs? Not likely. So when you take a look at the entire supply chain and say, well, the problem is, as an advertiser, I need to be able to deliver an ad closer to the time it airs. Well, if I need to do that, how do I solve that problem? And a unique, identific a unique identification and not having to rekey information about that ad means if I, at scale, if I've got hundreds or thousands of ads where I've got a key information in and I don't have to do that anymore, I can reduce timelines. 
The other problem that happens now, especially as we've transitioned from analog broadcast to digital broadcast, we actually have the, the situation where you've got two types of screens. You've got a, you know, the, the HD TV, the 16 by 9 screen, and you've got the 4 by 3 screen. Right now, advertisers are producing two ads, you know, what they call an HD version and an SD version. Well, if you produce the ads in a manner that is what's called center cut protected, then you could actually describe in a digital manner how that 16 by 9 commercial should be displayed in a 4 by 3 screen. Again, a cost savings. And right now, the distribution cost of an HD ad is a factor of 5 to 1. So if you can save the factor of one by distributing only that HD ad, by describing that ad in a certain manner, there's where your cost savings is. And that's a, you know, the cost of ad ID is likely mitigated by several distributions of an HD ad where you've saved the distribution of the SD. And the measurement piece of it is the other piece that, you know, if you, if you're looking at something on television, if you can't, you know, if you can't describe it by a common manner, you know, I've seen situations where I've seen the same ad with five different descriptions because the agency said it's this, the producer said it's that, and there's no authoritative source. And the, you know, the company that's looking at the competitive analysis is looking at it on the screen and saying, oh, that looks like that. There's nothing that they're all referencing that keeps them on the same page. When you think about a video ad, whether, it, you know, and I look at, at, at video ads as a larger holistic bucket because you've got premium video ad serving capabilities. And those premium sites are usually the, the NBC, ABC, CBS, Fox. These are all people who would love to get into the world of digital asset management have a single asset delivered to a single asset store that says, I know that this ad can be run over the air, online, on demand, mobile. And I know how to flip that content from that digital format that's in my digital library to all of those formats. So the video side of it, if you use a common identification methodology and a common delivery package, then you can basically say, here are the rules by which you parlay that to all the other platforms. So that's the video piece of it. The display piece is the same. It's an object. And you describe that object in some way, shape, or form. And there will be lots of technologies that will come up that will be, look in a standard manner how to inject that asset identification into the asset. But it's a matter of getting critical mass you know, this is the first time that the IAB has endorsed that ID. And the reason they did it is because the, it, we have a huge issue of discrepancies between what I thought were the impressions of this ad versus what the ad server or the website thought. If you now are using common identification methods, you can start to say, oh, I can reconcile these. The IAB's membership, which is like all the companies creating solutions for digital delivery <laughs> and online solutions, uh, you know, they obviously want brands to spend more and more of their marketing budget online. So it seems like this is solving a measurement issue. It's solving a operations issue and a measurement issue. Because operationally, the only way you know that you can identify an asset right now is by looking at the physical asset or looking maybe at the file name? Is there anything authoritative that can't be manipulated? You know, we, we, in order for, for this to scale, there's a lot of advertisers who are saying, I know that online advertising works, but it's so complex. I've got to deal with tags and pixels and beacons and any number of these methodologies. And they, they may not all go away, but they may be replaced by or enhanced by a standard identifier and a standard industry methodology to embed that identification. And, and so it seems like as a result, uh, you know, there'll be, a brand will be more comfortable move because you said like they know online video advertising is, is effective, mm -hmm. it's just 
sort of not knowing whose numbers to believe. And exactly. You know, and it's sort of like there shouldn't be three sets of numbers. One set of numbers. And if everybody's got a different way of identifying it, then of course, you're, you know, and every, you know, we look at the things that cause discrepancy and it always gets tracked back to human error. You know, somebody's fat fingering something into a computer system that doesn't match with something else. You know, it's, you know, we live in a very technologically connected world, yet there's still a lot of very manual process. And that's, you know, that's the goal. You know, we start, start small. You know, if the, the lowest of low hanging fruit is the actual asset. The asset has a life cycle of, the average television commercial or banner ad has a life cycle of about six months. And that's on the, on the high end, you know, probably three months. But if they're that transient, then you've got to be able to very quickly and easily respond to changes to the market needs. And standardization does that.